first of all, thank you for taking the time. Love mm-hmm. the series and love your work on it. Thank you. And and after last season, I, I thought I'd seen the darkest, but this season found ways to go darker. Yeah, it really does. Even, I mean, I always think we can't go anymore. I, I, I keep thinking the show can't surprise me, and it does every single time. <laughs> Which is great, and the fans love it. So let's start at the very beginning. How early on did you know that you'd be speaking to dead Jackie? Um, not really early on. The showrunners don't give us, well, the writers don't give us much spoilers. So we ended the finale and we didn't have any idea what was to come in the second season. Um, I think it was about two weeks before shooting the second season that we got the script for the first episode. Um, and I, I mean, I, I thought it was such a strong way to open this new season. Um, it, it's just, it falls right into Yellow Jackets. It, it's twisted, but it's also, I mean, you understand where she comes from. You're, you know, it's, to me, it's kind of the same as the way someone would hold or, or keep or, or, or smell their, um, friends or their lovers, um, sweater if they were dead, you know, it's trying to mm-hmm. keep that spirit and, and the little bits you have to cling on to alive. Um, so it made sense, but they just, you know, dug a little deeper and went into this sort of crazy world where she starts doing her makeup and, and, and talking to her and fighting with her. And then I think her unconscious brain is telling her that she needs to let Jackie go once and for all. And so I think there's all these crazy moment where Jackie sort of, sort of starts peeling her, her skin away. Um, and I think that's uh, Shauna's unconscious brain that's slowly seeping in and creating nightmare scenarios. Yeah, quite the perfect way, like you said, the perfect way to get, hop back in into a Yellow Jacket season two. It's like not not many shows can can uh, pull this off, but they did it perfectly. What was it like getting the chance to work with Ella again? And uh, obviously, you didn't know, like you said, you didn't see the scripts before, so yeah. And I was so sad when uh, I mean when we shot that scene at the finale of season one, Ella and I were just heartbroken because we knew we weren't really going to, I mean, we were always together during the first season. So it was really heartbreaking. And to have her back was like bittersweet because I got to work with her, which is always so fun. And we're so close and um, we just had so much to catch up on. And between takes, we were like, fill me in on your life and fill me in on this. Um, But then it just felt like we were running out of time because we knew that after episode two, she wouldn't be back. Um, So it was, yeah, it was bittersweet. It was nice, but also sad because she, I don't know, Ella has this personality where she takes a lot of space in a room just by being herself. She has this sort of aura where as soon as she walks into a room, everyone sort of gravitates towards her. And I, I really think that she left a big hole amongst our group and that has certainly been we we felt that in this season and when you first learned that you'd have to eat Jackie uh what were your first thoughts and what was the experience like shooting that because most people don't get to talk to their food before they eat it (laughs) yeah um I was very surprised that Shauna would be the first the one to kind of give the okay or the blessing to do so I thought she was more so going to be bullied into doing it um and so I I thought it created such a cool contrast and and conflicting kind of feeling uh, in the scene. But um, it's also, it made sense. It's kind of up to Shauna to honor Jackie properly. Um, Shooting it was very bizarre. Um, So we had this, her body, that was props, obviously. Um, But it was made out of, jackfruit which we called jackie fruit because it's it's jackie um and then we had this like rice paper roll that they made all soggy so it looked like it was um skin that was being stretched out so it was actually all kind of delicious but it just looked visually so disgusting that it was hard for us to step back and see it for what it is it really felt when we were doing the scene that we were eating someone um and 
I remember turning around and, 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 and gagging my food out and Sammy was puking. Um, and even the scene, the, the juxtaposition where we have this beautiful Greek Roman feast, Mm -hmm. um, by the end, our director, Ben was like, just grab at everything and anything you can see on the table. And, um, just had this like feral animalistic energy and Courtney who was sitting to my right I would pick out of her plate but I didn't really see what I was picking at so I was basically picking at her pre-chewed food (laughs) or food that she'd put in her mouth that she had spat out mixed with like wine and then I would grab it and just put it in my mouth and I was like this has already been eaten and it was already all soggy it was just it was so gross And we were covered in food afterwards, but it's definitely one of the most unique shooting experiences. And it was, it ended up really, really fun, I would say, in some twisted way. It sounds like madness, but it sounds like fun madness in a way. Yeah. So let's fast forward a little bit uh, to episode six, which is just heartbreaking, uh, heartbreaking, heart wrenching. Um, What was your original reaction or your initial reaction when you? got the chance to read that script? Uh, I felt very overwhelmed. Um, I mean, I first of all, I, I, I felt very honored to have been written. It wasn't written for me, obviously, but to have the opportunity to play such a beautiful, well-written, well-constructed roller coaster of emotion episode. Um, and so I felt very honored, but I felt like I had so much pressure on my shoulders and that I was never going to be able to live up to the task. And I remember in the table read, um, Liz Garbus, who directed the episode, everyone kind of walked away and she's like, I'd just like to speak with you for like a second one-on-one to discuss some scenes. And everyone walked out and I looked up for my script and I just started sobbing. And I had never even seen like hello to Liz. And I just was sobbing in her face and she came and she com- com- um, comforted me and she was like, it's going to be okay. Um, and she was so helpful in, in all of the research going into it. She sent me all these um, clips to watch about women giving birth, um, a bunch of references. Um, and then I, on my own, went to speak to a lot of women in my in my life and, and um, that have been through birth and miscarriages. Um And I thought that was what I love the most about the episode is that it shows a lot of, well, like I said, the roller coaster of emotions um, and all the different facets to giving birth, the, you know, the beautiful ones, the sadder ones, the darker ones, the harder ones. Like, even if you have the baby, it's like how hard some women, how hard of a time some women have breastfeeding. That's an issue that we don't really talk about. Um, and so, yeah, it was just such a com- complex episode. Yeah, it, it floored me. I, I watched it twice. And you know, the first time it hit me and I thought I was prepared and I watched it again and it hit me harder. You know, as a parent, you kind of like pause life and say, what if you mm-hmm. know, this moment happens? And it's uh, it's just devastating. And I made the mistake of just watching it just before getting on uh, to speak to you. And I couldn't. I had to actually pause and say, OK. I, I've connected enough with it. Uh, have you had the chance to watch it? I have watched it. I will say I'm I'm too close to it to be able to step back and see it for what it is. Um, it was such an intense and and rough week um, where I felt like I was just like physically in in pain from screaming so much um, and mentally just exhausted. Um, that I, I, it just goes by so quick when I watch it. I'm like, that's it. <laughs> uh, I I felt like I gave more and then I feel like I give nothing in the episode, but that's, I just know oh. I'm being hard on myself. Um, and I'm just, I think all actors were never really, I mean, I'll speak for myself, but I'm never really satisfied with my work. So I have a really hard time seeing it for what it is, but um, a lot of people have, come up to me and and said how um touched they felt by the episode and um and yeah it was just really important for us to you know treat all of these scenes with a lot of respect um because you don't know what the audience has been through what the people on set have been through um 
yeah so to and, and to honor all of these different stories into one episode and i'm i think we've managed to do that or at least i hope so well i have to say you put it all out there and it it truly connects in in ways that i wasn't expecting especially from a, a series like this that goes in these dark craziest places but to touch on something so uh, human and so relatable it's uh you you completely pull it off and every like i said every time it's just devastating so uh bravo thank you um so when you play these roles and you and you play these you know these uh act out these moments it's very dark how uh you know and you said it's a long shoot and you're putting all this effort into it how do you kind of turn off from that how do you get out of that mode i can't imagine it's easy i it it really is for me actually it's very my opinion but i always have sort of the imposter syndrome in my industry because i feel like i'm not method enough because i can actually snap out of it so easily like i'll cry and and i'll you know get in the zone beforehand by listening to music and tapping into sad places in my mind but as soon as they call cut and we're done with the day i'm chilling like i'm going home i'm cooking food um luckily i had courtney whom i've lived with this season that's just been like my rock my person my emotional punching bag um and so she would always be there when i came home or even our often we drive back from set together and we would just like rant about everything and anything and listen to music um but yeah i don't really stay in character like as soon as they call cut i just i just do my thing and i don't think about it and go back to work the next day and I focus on what I have to do the next day. But beforehand you're you're diving deep into the into Shauna's psyche. Yeah, I mean bef- Yeah, to some extent. I mean, like I said, again, I feel like I have the imposter syndrome because I don't feel like I've ever become a character. Like I just I'm like, oh, this is what sad would look like. So let me whole sad face like I don't feel like I've ever become or like I don't I I try I seriously try I get my scripts and I'm like okay how would Shauna move and I try to feel the way she would feel but I just always kind of feel like myself I mean that's not you don't have to feel like yourself it's what no but I feel like I would be a better actor if I did if I were more method but I don't know how to do it but, I think many, I think people would disagree. You know, maybe for you, it would make you feel better as an actress, but I think for the, the viewer, you, you know, you're doing everything and it, it works. So, <laughs> um, this is a therapy session. So <laughs> I know, I'm giving you my deepest, darkest secrets. Yeah. So Sean is such a strong character. And then we see these moments of her insecurity, especially in the, the finale where she has this moment when you're seeing her journal and she feels invisible again. Um, after two seasons, how has your understanding of Shauna changed? Um, I think I'm very curious to see where she'll go in the third season. I think where we find her at the end of season two, I think she's just undergone so much trauma. Um, I think she starts off in, and when she lands in the wilderness, she kind of yeah, like you said, starts to feel seen a little more, not even feeling seen, but she just finds her own voice and her own path. And I think she finally steps up for herself, which is something she's never gotten to do because of like social hierarchy or um, she was always looking up to Jackie and she's kind of accepted to sit in the role of the observer. And I, I think she doesn't want to be that anymore. And I think throughout the second season, it's a bit complex complex because she's figuring herself out but at the same time undergoing so much loss like grieving Jackie's loss and then the babies and then I think she just has so much pressure on her shoulders that by the end she's definitely um projecting a lot and and projecting a lot of her frustration that she has towards herself onto other people um and so I think she's isolating herself from the group a lot um which yeah which is why by the end of the second season she goes back into feeling isolated again i think she will slowly become a leader more and more as the season progresses i think she's gonna like 
I hope she's going to become like ice cold, like just so, I mean, she's just, I don't think she could take any more pain. And I think she's going to really detach from her feelings and just become, go full dark in her mind. Um, and then I think, I think once they'll be rescued and then she'll be set back into real life, I think she's going to kind of lose that side of her and, and again, go back, drift back into um, molding into people's perception of her and wanting to be loved again. And, um, and that's why she ends up marrying Jeff so quickly after she's been rescued. Do you expect us to go forward after, you know, after that, once they're, they're, uh, they're brought back to the States or back to uh, civilization, I guess. Do you expect us to see that in coming seasons that their life in between the transitioning? I really hope so, because I think it's such an interesting transition. It's like rehabilitation into society after being so disconnected and, and, and doing things that were absolutely for survival, but that they still feel so bad about. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm just mostly curious to see what the dynamics of the group will be like, are they going to become, are they going to like hang, keep hanging out together because only they can understand what they've been through. Are they going to be into, are they going to be in denial mode and they'll like all go their separate ways and just not want to talk about it. Um, yeah. I'm very interested to see how they'll settle back into reality. Yeah, fingers crossed that we, uh, get things moving and we can get the show into production quicker than oh, I know. Yeah, but the I mean, way the world is looking right now, unfortunately. Yeah. But again, I mean, we, the whole cast are in full support of, of the strike. And I mean, we, we wouldn't be here without the writers. Yes. I mean, they're core members. To the, they well, are same, the, same here. Yeah. So um, yeah, it will, it will take as long as it takes and that's, it's just, it is what it is. Just let's end it right. Do it, do the right thing. So how has playing Shauna changed you as an actress and a person or has it changed you? It's changed me mostly by watching all the other girls on set. Um, I think we all have very different styles of acting. I always take Sophie Thatcher, for example, because she just moves, like has this ability to move through space that seems so natural to her. Whereas I, let's say I'm standing up, I never know what to do with my hands or with my arms. I just feel so stuck and I don't have that. I don't, I don't feel like I have that freedom. And so I've just been very lucky to be able to observe these girls and, and like, just take note of, of all their little particular things that they do um, and details that I've tried to incorporate in my acting. Um, and as a human, I mean, Again, it comes more so like the, the group, like all of us are so different um, in terms of personalities. And I think we all um, learn so much from each other in a very respectful way. And we've learned to respect our boundaries and to elevate each other and to communicate um, and to educate each other. Um, and so, yeah, they've just opened my eyes on to a lot of things. And um, I mean, Courtney has been, like I mentioned earlier, has just I I can only hope to be as good as a as one tenth of as good of a person as she is. And so um I look up to her every day to become the better version of myself. I know how cliche it sounds, but yeah. beautiful. Love it. And you know it's it's great that you you came there as a team and you it seems like you from what I'm hearing from from everybody involved, you're leaving as a family. Well you're can you're you're now a family. So it's uh it's gotta be pretty special. Yeah it's 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 nice knowing that we'll find each other again, though, because it would be very sad finishing season two, not knowing we would have a third. But knowing we had a third, we're like, oh, we just take a little break and then we'll um, it's like summer camp every year. It's really fun. <laughs> it's an awesome camp. Um, so is Sophie the fan, not Sophie the actress? What is your favorite part about Yellow Jackets? Ooh, it's a good question. I I'm, I will. I think. Melanie and Jeff's really Melanie well and Warren's relationship so older Shauna and Jeff's relationship I really like and I'm not saying this because it's Shauna but um because I just bring the I think they bring so much levity to the show and so much humor um which I think we need at times um 
and they just have this like quirky back and forth feisty but funny um relationship uh and I think that's where I I laugh the most when I watch the show so I think that that and also the fact that I I think the show does a great job at walking this fine line um into in our timeline at least into like what well no even in the adult timeline this season but what's reality what's Mm -hmm. what's the higher power how like all of those kind of more so existential questions and I think what's amazing is that there's no right or wrong answer in our show and I think um I love reading well I get sent all these fan theories and and I love to see where they where their mind goes with it um and it it just yeah it, it pushes the audience to think beyond and to reflect on the show and I think that's such a strength that we have and um yeah that the audience gets to decide what sort of side they want to team on um and that there is no right or wrong there's just people rooting for different people and the fans are amazing i i am lucky enough to get some episodes beforehand so i know what what happens in episode four five six while they're still watching two and three Mm -hmm. and i love the theories and there's so much you know passion about it and then there's debate but they're they're nice fans they're not you know bickering they're just like kind of celebrating the show together yeah but it's uh have you had any particular uh moments when someone's reached out and it's touched you or just been something special um I mean yeah a lot of people I, well, I all the little montages I see on Instagram I always find so cute um it's been really fun to have an audience like that I come from more of a film background where I kind of just do the movie and no one really you know speaks about it but um yeah to see how committed they are and to see how they pick up on things that I haven't even picked up on I'm like I should do my job better because I clearly haven't read the script properly um yeah they're just uh, amazing and and the yeah level of of commitment and all the little things they do on Instagram that they tag me in and a lot of people will write me and be like the yellow jackets is like the show that I'm that gets me through the week and um or I relate to this character so much I've never felt seen like this before and I think that's why I'm one of the reasons I love the job that I do is to be able to portray characters that um, give a voice to people and and that people can feel seen um, and understood because I know that when I was going through and I'm still going through hard times and sometimes I like to um, listen to lyrics, watch shows where Mm -hmm. people literally seem to be going through what I'm going and it reassures me to know that I'm not the only one going through that. So when I read those little comments on Instagram, I, I feel very, very touched. That's fantastic. Yeah, the, the power of entertainment is incredible and, and how much it can change people and, and affect people. Yeah. So let me wrap up with a simple one. Three words to describe Shauna in season two. Um, heartbroken or like devastated. Um psycho or maybe that's more misty <laughs> but she does get a little psycho on the end on lottie uh yeah, I... and oh my god uh oh my god these are always so hard because i have so like it's so hard to find the exact one um but i would say evolving because she changes a lot throughout this i like it i like it a lot i I thought you were going to say hungry but i'll take evolving but aren't they all they're all hungry (laughs) (laughs) so it's been a pleasure to speak with you again i absolutely love your work on the series and i I look forward to speaking to you again hopefully next year next season thank you so much have a good rest of your day have a thank you have a great day